By the grace of Jesus Christ, my brethren, let us read today from the Old Testament, from the book of Job, chapter 22 and verse 21. The book of Job, chapter 22, 21, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. Receive, please, instruction from, my, from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. Then you will lay your gold in the dust and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. He will make your prayer to Him. You will make your prayer to Him and He will hear you and He will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. When they cast you down, then you say, Exaltation will come. Then he will save the humble person. He will even deliver one who is not innocent. Yes, he will deliver by the purity of your hands. Amen. It is written, my, my brethren, and the Bible cannot be broken, that in the latter days evil times will come. For men will be in general unbelievers. And the truth is that they come. Many times, evil times come in our lives, either on a personal level, something bad happens to some person, to some brother, a sudden bad thing happens, an unexpected evil, or on a family level, sudden, sudden destruction, there where you do not expect it. Sudden events happen to people who are in the same family, maybe. But also evil times come, which hit a whole, a whole family of relatives, uh, the church, our country, but also to the whole earth. People call these things crises. Environmental crises, financial crises. Illness, unemployment, quarreling, separation. Of course, there is also the natural course of the evil times, which is old age. When years go by, man expects evil times, and these evil times arrive. And just as God my beloved brethren, foresees for man. He foresees that he won't be in constant youth, but he will have youth, maturity, and old age. And he permits this, and this is the grace of the Lord. It isn't punishment. It is the grace of God. So just like in the life of man, it has been appointed from God for there to be evil times and in the end, to the, the end of his life, just before his departure, and I repeat, this is by the grace of God. And so I can explain it, it is the preparation of the Lord. So that he may help even in the end of their life, he may help man who did not manage to open his ears to the calling of God, which, to which ears many calls have come to the ears of this person for repentance, for return, for salvation. So now God, with a general rule, which he always uses on everyone, just a short time before the end, Two things arrive in the life of man. Evil times, bad times, first of all, and 
If man again does not understand even worse times, but if man understands and realizes what the grace of God is, then there is blessing and indeed exceeding blessing. I have a great example that God has uh, taught me. It's my mother. She died 84 years old. Let's say 84 exactly. And God gave her grace the last month for 40 days. Anna had many problems with my mother. She was a good person, but uh, she didn't trust God. For 40 days, though, before she left, she repented. And these last 40 days were an especially great and glorious blessing for her and for all of us. And when the time arrived, that day, God had informed all of us. And all of them had as assembled around her, all the brethren who were close. Don't think it was a big number. And they were praying. They were all filled in the Holy Spirit. My mother was glorifying God. And suddenly, while she could not stand up, she looks up. She stands up and then she left. The Lord took her. This is the message today, my brethren, that the evil times that we're going through are the grace of God, but not for all men. Either it's difficult times on a personal level, something, uh, I became ill, for example, or I was fired suddenly, or a difficulty has arrived on a family level, maybe, separation, uh, one child this way, the other one that way, the husband and wife quarrel. These are bad times. Or whatever, we can extend it to as much as we like. This is the grace of God. But the grace of God only when man manages to open his ears. And let me say it more correctly. When, man, when God manages to open the ears of man so that they may hear his voice. Accept his word so that he may come and bring restoration, rebuilding, a great blessing, and not only for him, but also for all his surroundings. For that reason, my beloved brethren, every illness has a recipe. It has a prescription from the doctor. Every bad situation has a prescription from God. So when there's no good in your life, when suddenly things went bad, they fell apart, then God comes and says, stop, I will show you the way of blessing. Let me show you the way of restoration, of rebuilding, and of great blessing indeed. Stop and consider your Creator and draw near to Him. Become an acquaintance with Him. Become His friend. And how will He become my friend? Acquaint yourself with Him so that His peace may come into your life and so that good may come to you from now on, but this good to come from God. So how will I become close to God? We thank God, my dear brethren, because there is only one way, but it's so beautiful. Lock yourself in your closet of prayer, if possible with prayer and fasting, because there is another way. Sit down and think what you're going to do, but remember that the Word of God says that certainly man walks in his imagination. And the result of this is great troubles come into his life. If you sit down to think and let me see what I'm going to do and I'll plan and you even pray in your thoughts. Let me see what I'm going to do. Well, things won't go well then. From trouble to trouble, from anxiety to anxiety, from fear to fear. 
But stop where you are. Go into your closet of prayer. Ask for the blood of Jesus Christ to clean you. <coughs> Forgive everyone with whom something isn't going well with you for whatever reason. And then begin to describe all the evil things and the difficulties that have arrived in your life. But say these things to the Lord. Because there with all certainty is your heavenly Father who in secret reveals himself. But there is also Jesus Christ there who helps you in heaven by interceding for you. But there is also the paraclete, the spirit of truth, the intercessor who helps you in your weaknesses through moanings and groanings that can't be uttered. And then God will act. The first thing that he will do, this God of peace, is he will preserve your heart from thoughts, from anxieties, from fears, from, from troubles and your mind from bad decisions. For that reason, don't make any decision. And when God will come to bring restoration to your heart and to your thoughts, then the peace of God will immediately arrive into your heart. Then immediately God begins to work in your life. The next step is for the God of peace to sanctify you so that you may stand uh, complete, un spotless in the body, soul, and spirit. And you will see your life being coming closer to God now. And as you come closer to God, then God through Jesus Christ will reveal to you your, His will that is good, perfect, and pleasing and you'll know what you have to do. You no longer have to think but it will be the Lord who will open the path so you can walk in it. And furthermore, in this situation of yours, the God of peace will rebuke the devil and he will rebuke the devil beneath your feet. And you, you will be triumphant. So acquaint yourself with him. Be at peace. Then and only then will good come to you. Only then. There is no other way. Don't search to find another way. We are not so wise, so strong, so mighty, so able, so clever, so uh, successful so that we are able to achieve things in our life. No, we're not. But we may not be, but God may make us. I was praying the previous week for a brother or sister who had a very serious problem and I didn't have an answer to give them. <coughs> and I was praying all night long. I couldn't go to sleep. And God told me something that applies to all of us. He said, tell her to thank God for what she is not and to glorify Him for what he will, she will be. Thank me because she's not in the world. She's not in the affliction of the world or the harm of the world. In the grace, but she's in the grace of Christ. But at the same time, let her glorify God with faith in what God will do tomorrow. Grateful, therefore, for what we are not. But also praising God for what we will be in the future. In the future that is distant, that is sons and kings and priests of the Most High glorious but also of the present time and the presence of God and in the kingdom of God being governed by the Holy Spirit my beloved brethren there is nothing that God cannot do there is no situation that God cannot change there is no difficulty that the Christ cannot rebuke the devil from it and deliver men from it so long as we trust Him and wait for His intervention with patience because we are in need of patience to do the will of God and to enjoy the promises of the Father. So acquaint yourself with the Lord. Be at peace. Good will come, definitely. Only accept His Word. Lay it in your heart. And make sure from your tent 
that every iniquity is taken away from your tent. Every transgression. Be careful. Accept the word of the Lord as it is. Do not judge it. Do not change it. Do not skew it. Do not add to it. Do not take away from it. Do not modernize it. Do not hear human words. Accept whatever is written. Accept the word of God from the mouth of the Lord. Do not doubt the written word of God. Just accept it and lay it in your heart. Believe it. Love this word. And be careful. From your tent, from your house, from your environment, as much as it depends on you, make sure that you remove all iniquity. He doesn't mean he doesn't say sin, but iniquity. Anything that is out of the word of God, anything that is opposite to the word of God. All the men of God had a beautiful characteristic that God has f- wants for the last apostolic church. And he wants to do it. They were obedient in all things to the word of God. And governed in all things by the voice of the Holy Spirit. Then the waterfalls of heaven open. Then you will heap up for yourself the gold, gold as the dust. Because the Lord will rebuild you. The Almighty will be your delight, will be your defense. You will delight in the presence of the Almighty. And you will exo- lift your name up to Him with glor- glorification and praise. You will pray and He will hear you. He will listen to you. And you will also, though, be careful. You must remember to pay your vows. And what are your vows? I want to be your friend, Lord. I want to be close to you. I want to never depart from your presence. I want to trust your word completely and absolutely. I want to keep your word in my heart. And then, here, my beloved brethren, is the absolute blessing on earth and in heaven. Whatever on you decide to do, whatever you declare... It shall be established for you, for your decisions will be the decisions of God. Your thoughts will be the thoughts of God. Your counsels will be the counsels of God, and your ways will be His ways. And light will shine on your ways. The light of the Lord. A light that surpasses the brightness of the sun. And if then... And the great blessing that God will bring, because He will bring it, and it is a word of God, a law of God, a spiritual law that is unbreakable. Try it, my brethren. Try this law personally. Try it and you will see that the word of God is alive and active. It is alive and acts. Jesus Christ is risen. He is faithful to his word. He cannot deny himself. Try me and I will open the waterfalls of heaven. And I will pour out my blessings so that there is no place for you to lay it. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not a religion. It is not a theory of philosophy. It is yes and amen. Whoever tried this has experience. He has seen the outstretched arm of the Lord, the hand of God, the glorious hand of God. It isn't difficult. God doesn't ask for many things to go to heaven and find Christ and then go down to earth and search whom or whatever. He tells us, go to your room, my brother, in your small room, lock the door, go inside. Drive away from you every obstacle that you find and you'll see what God will do. He is glorious. He is almighty. He is true. His word is not a little book. He is alive. And he acts. But also he is, this, this word works among the believers. 
So if at the, the peak, ex ex forgive me of this blessing, the peak of the blessing of God, which will definitely arrive, if you do not become proud there, but on the contrary, you humble yourself, then God will establish you and make you precious in His eyes. From the moment that you stood precious in my eyes, says Christ, I glorified you and loved you. The result of this, you are the cause of great blessing, great salvation in your environment. First of all, in your close family environment. <clears throat> because we still have people in our families that have not returned to Christ yet. But still, my brethren, I wouldn't say that it is so easy. I'd say that it is difficult. I'd say that it's impossible. But furthermore, I say that what is impossible with men is possible with God. <coughs> so I say it's easy with God. But at the same time, I say that it's a sure thing that God will act with the exceptional, with the best, possible ways that always astound us because God is a God of surprises we want in these latter days in these evil times which our life is going through as people as individuals as families as a church as a country as a world we want to enjoy the things that God has prepared by grace by grace for these evil times. We acknowledge that it is the grace of God. Let us not consider it that it is a crisis. That it is evil from God. This is the grace of God. The grace of God brings these difficult times. So that we may find our path. And so that the name of our Lord be glorified. The grace of God. If only I had words, a heart, a mouth that could call it out to you in the way that God revealed it to me. Don't fear the difficult times. It is the grace of God. So that we may listen, so that we may believe, and Christ may be glorified. If, after your humility, you seek with your whole soul to be holy, and to be clean and pure and, and you seek peace with all men. Then God will find the chance through you. For Christ to save even those who are not innocent. Do you understand? Do you see how great the grace of God is? How great and immense it is? He doesn't say I will, I will save those who will repent and return and seek me. No, I will find a way to save those who are not innocent. This grace and this mercy that God gives in these difficult times may God help us may God help us live this may God help us enjoy these things and Christ be glorified in our life amen